Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here. Happy people change the world. And of course, that include teachers, parents, and students. But first, it seems really easy, isn't it? It seems so simple. But first, we have to allow that happiness to come through first. By profession, I'm a producer filmmaker, and I'm also involved in a lot of community projects for social change. But five years ago, I was really burnt out from work. And that was the time when I met this famous Zen master and peace activist, Thich Nhat Hanh. And something he said really intrigued me. He said, with the practice of mindfulness, we can get in touch with peace and happiness in any given moment. It would transform suffering and create world peace. And I thought, well, this sounds really nice, but how do we do that? So after that encounter, I went and looked it up. And being, you know, being a producer, I like to do my research. And so I found a lot of scientific research has shown that with the practice of mindfulness can literally change our brain chemistry to be more resilient to stress, to, be, to have better skill to self-regulate our emotions. It is also a very effective way to train, or as some would say, to wire the brain to develop emotion, emotional intelligence, which is a very crucial skill in the 21st century. And you might, you might read somewhere that there's a, you know, in Harvard Business School, uh, many, many mainstream media has been reporting that a lot of major corporation in, for example, in the United States, a lot of CEOs are practicing mindfulness. A lot of engineers in high-tech company like Apple or Intel, they use mindfulness to manage stress, to be more focused and creative. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is simply being present with your breath, with your body, with your thoughts, your feelings and emotions in the present moment without any judgment. And I would like to invite you to try it out now. You can just have your eyes closed or have your eyes open. But if you close your eyes, it's more pleasurable. So now, being aware of, begin to be aware of how you're feeling right now. You might have been rushing from work to come to here. How are you feeling right now? Now bring your attention to your breath. Notice that you are breathing in as you are breathing in. Notice that you are breathing out as you are breathing out. You might even feel that there is air floating in your nostril as you are breathing in, and there is air floating out your nostril as you are, as you are breathing out. Just keep noticing that you are breathing in as you are breathing in. Notice you are breathing out as you are breathing out. If you find your mind wanders off, just bring your mind back to your breathing. Now, I would like you to be aware of your body. Begin to be aware of where your feet are. Where are your feet? Being aware of where your legs are. Aware of where your stomach is. And if your body feels like it wants to move, allow it to move. Don't try to control anything. Now, being aware of the chest, your shoulders, your neck, your face, your whole head, if you're aware of any tightness in the body, 
let it go. Just let it go. Being aware of your whole body, wherever you are sitting. Great, thank you. And if your eyes are closed, you can have them open, or you can keep your eyes closed. So mindfulness is like this spaciousness of the mind. The moment you tune into it, it quickly shows you the totality of life, the energy that is moving your breath, the, where your body is, the thoughts and feelings that is running through your head. And that really gives us the information, it really helped to inform what is going on in our body and in our mind, and really help us to take appropriate next action. So in education, because this is TEDx teacher, so I want to talk a little bit about mindfulness in education. In Hong Kong, we have a phrase called stuff the duck system, meaning we stuff students with as much information in the shortest amount of time in order for them to pass tests and exams. This stuff the duck system is a pandemic all over the world. Youth suicide due to high level of stress and anxiety over exams, too much homework, or can't keep up with study is a problem many countries face in the past four decades. Statistics have shown in South Korea, 20% of middle or high school students feel the attempt to commit suicide due to stress at school. In India, 20 students kill themselves every day. Worldwide, 200,000 teenagers commit suicide. Last month in Hong Kong, where I come from, we have three students suicide within three weeks. The youngest one was only 13 years old. No child should ever need to go through this kind of suffering. So as parents and teachers, what can we do to alleviate this kind of suffering? Because when we know our children suffer, we suffer too, don't we? There is a mindfulness movement in education everywhere in the world. It is, it is a movement led by a lot of teachers and educators who care really deeply in what they do. For example, a mindful school in Oakland in the United States has run mindfulness-based program with over 18,000 students and to almost 800 teachers. Over 90% of the students say that they know how to better regulate themselves after the program and they will continue to use mindfulness in the future. They become more focused in the study and the results have shown the benefit of mindfulness as well. Over 90% of teachers personally have benefited from the program. This is a school in Hong Kong called Rosary Hill. It's a Catholic school. A year ago, the school decided that they will bring mindfulness to the school to help teachers and students to restore themselves from the stress of a traditional school. In the, morning, in the morning assembly, before they use mindfulness practice, teachers will have to shout at the top of their lungs for over five minutes to get the students to calm down before they can start the morning. Now, they will invite the sound of the bell, which is a very classic tool that a mindfulness teacher will use. And they will start the morning with mindful breathing with some mindful movement. And then after that, and this is teachers and students doing it together. And after that, they would say a short prayer to set the intention for the day. 
like bringing kindness or love and respect for each other. And at each class, teachers will invite the bell and do a simple mindful breathing exercise with the student before they start the class and at the end of each class. They even run mindfulness session with parents to help them to support their children at home. A year later, they have mindfulness practice in the whole kindergarten section as well. And this is some of the feedback that the student gave uh, to the teacher after they've been practicing mindfulness for a year. I've learned to be honest, calm, peace, and brave. Mindfulness has given me a lot of strength to face problems. I always get mad and upset, but after I had mindfulness lesson, I'm able to control, I'm able to control myself and be happy. So this last two days, um, I walk around where I'm, where I'm staying in Tokyo. And I found that with mindfulness, I can really experience so much more richness of what's around me and things that even seems mundane. And this is just like I see this really gorgeous sunlight shining on, on this hedge and bring out the richness of, of, of the leaves and the richness and the color of the leaves. And it was just so wonderful. This morning, I took a walk uh, in Minji Shrine. And as I was walking there, I practiced my mindful walking. And as I was practicing my mindful walking, this little caterpillar show up. It was suspended 30 feet from the top of a tree. And in that moment when I saw it, I stopped. And as I was looking at it, and I'm being so present to something so amazing is happening. Something seems so small, but so amazing. And in that moment, the sound of people walking past me on the gravel road, on the gravel path, just fall away. As if everything around me just fall away. And in that moment, it's only me and that caterpillar. And in the next moment, I was just so captivated by the wonders of life. And in the next moment, I feel this happiness just come. It was just there. And that's how mindfulness work. It's a moment by moment experience. I can tell you a lot about it. You can read up about it. You can research it. But it is, it is something you can't learn only to experience. And at the same time, it is so easy to incorporate into daily life as well be it you're brushing your teeth, drinking a cup of tea, or simply being with someone that you are talking to. And it's in that moment, by being fully present and let go of the worries or anxiety or judgment or whatever that comes through your mind, in that moment of letting go, we tune in to that person in that moment. And in that moment, we connect. And that's how mindfulness worked. There is a mindfulness movement that is happening everywhere in the world, not only in education. You can bring it to your school if you don't have it already. You can bring it to your home. Bring it to yourself. Allow yourself to experience the richness of life. Allow yourself to experience that joy and happiness and peace that is available in every moment, no matter where you are. So right now, why not just close your eyes and just simply experience this moment, this very wonderful moment right here, right now. Thank you.